I would like to invite you to follow ahead and have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you in this beautiful morning that we can come to you and worship your name. Please bless all the people around the world, our families, friends, and members of church. Be good, especially with the person that are sick. May God be with them and give you your spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus, with all my heart, I love that you're with me and never apart. I love that you love me and that you're my friend. I love that your love for me will never end. I love the Lord. Love the Lord with all your heart, self, and mind. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. and offering. Jesus loved a cheerful giver. You are helping to us keep our service going and helping us to carry the gospel to all the world. May God bless you always.
Good morning, church family. I'm so happy to be able to be with you. And now we're in the holiday season, and I per- personally love the holiday season. There's just so many emotions that are just gathered around the thoughts of Thanksgiving and just this feeling of the Christmas holiday season. And then once we're done with Christmas, you know that it truly doesn't end until we really hit that New Year's vibe and we create all of these New Year's resolutions that we want to you know, finish and, and start into the 2021. And as we put these together, we have this sense of renewal. We have this sense of joy, of, of peace. And then it, doesn't it feel like the rest of the year it's different? Right? From, basically from mid-November to when we start actually planning what we're going to eat in Thanksgiving, all the way up to maybe like January 4 or 5, there's this amazing feeling that we participate in in the United States. And then somewhere after that, it just kind of plateaus and then it normalizes and then we just wait for the holiday season to return, right? It's it's almost as if there's no hope during the rest of the year. And I think that that's really interesting because the holiday seasons want to remind us to be filled with really positive thoughts, right? If you think about it, Thanksgiving is built on things that we're thankful for, positive thoughts. Christmas really is being merry and of good cheer, time spent with family, and the birth of Christ, and you know this joyful celebration that we get together in as we're participating in Christmas. And New Year's is all about renewal and, and peace and rebuilding of ourselves, and all of that is really positive, right? If, if I was to take those, these three major holidays and combine them together, the one word that I would use would be positive. And I really like that word, positive. You know, um, one of my favorite movies, especially in Christmas time, is Home Alone. And one of my favorite lines that comes out of it is, uh, at the very beginning, if you've seen the movie, uh, the, par- the, the whole family is about to go on a trip to Paris. And the power went out that morning, and so all of their alarms didn't go off. And, you know, they need to make it to the airport for their trip to Paris, and they end up leaving Kevin McAllister home all alone by himself while they're in Paris. And while they're leaving to go on the plane, their, uh, their uncle, Uncle Frank, uh, he walks out of the door in this particular scene, and, he's, and he tells the dad, the main dad of the story, he looks at his, at his watch, he says, there's no way we're going to make it to that plane. It leaves in 45 minutes. And as the dad, you know, shuts the door, puts on his coat, and walks down the doors, he's like, think positive, Frank. And as he says that, the, the uncle, Uncle Frank, is like, you be positive, I'll be realistic, is his answer to this. And it's kind of, you know, this nice little 90s joke about, you know, just trying to be positive about the situation and, you know, grumpiness and, and all these different things during the holiday season. And I really like that line of thinking positive, right? Positivity totally exists in the Bible. It's everywhere. But it's a word that's never used, right? If you think about it in the Bible, where in the Bible does it use the word positive? It's, it's not there, you know, because if... if you know, a lot of us, when we look at the Bible, we think of major translations such as King James, New King James, even NIV. Maybe you want to go with ESV or NRSV, but these, you know, these are kind of your, your main dominant biblical scriptures that we use that offer the most variety of the understanding and the symbolism that exists within the text. And when we're looking at those, they're an old English style that don't really use the word positive, right? You know, let's think of a, of a prime example when it comes to our attitude is Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. 
which are the fruits of the Spirit. And it mentions that the fruits of the Spirit are, you know, maybe you already know them, and maybe you can say them along with me. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. If you think about it, you know, none of those words were think positive, right? But every single one of them is positive in its own nature, right? Like if you think about it, love is a positive attribute. Uh, joy definitely is. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness. These are all attitudes that we choose to take. We choose to take the high road in, in a certain situation that we may be in, or you know, we're interacting with somebody, and that person may not be very loving, but that gift of the Spirit is to be loving and to be joyful. And so, even though positivity may not actually show up in the Bible as a word, it is a synonym that exists all throughout the Bible. And so I want to look at that today. There were two main verses that really caught my eye. And the first one, I think that we know quite well. Um, you know, when it, it's a really good verse that encapsulates this idea of thinking positive or being positive. And it's a good one to remember. And so I, I want to encourage you to open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. Uh, we're going to be going to verse 4 through 8. So that's Philippians 4. Four through eight. Philippians chapter four, verses four through eight, it says this. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Not sometimes. Always. Always rejoice in the Lord. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This text is perfect, right? Rejoice, be happy, be thankful in all situations. In everything. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And it says, be anxious about nothing. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Notice that in the text, it doesn't say that God will automatically answer it yes. It says, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard your hearts. That's a powerful text. It's powerful. You know, we're talking about this mindset of positivity, right? And this idea of how can I remain positive, you know, faith, you know, not just in the holiday season, but all throughout the year. And yet we have this text that's saying, you know, you may not get exactly what you want, but let your request be made known to God and he will give you peace in the situation. He will give you a sense of calmness and assurity to know that your life is in the best hands possible. And I, and I love that. You know? And this is, this is a text that isn't just tied to the holiday season. This isn't just uh, you know, something that's tied to the birth of Christ. This isn't something that's just tied to Thanksgiving as a holiday or even the New Year's. This is something that applies to us all year long. You know, even in February and March and June and August, this text applies. We don't have to be anxious. We don't have to be concerned about what's happening around us. Just ask God with a thankful heart, and he will give you a peace and understanding. I love that. The next text is right next door. It's Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to be reading part of verse 18. Is 18, uh, I say 18b to verse 20. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. 
So in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, halfway through, it says, Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What I love about this uh, about this particular verse, especially uh, you know in 19 and 20, is that it's telling us to comfort one another, right? Through singing, through hymns, through melody, giving thanks in all things to God, right? Again, we have this uh, this mindset of being thankful, of being grateful, but just being happy. And synonymously being positive, right? We're, we're thinking of good thoughts. We're reminiscing on these things that we can cherish and that we can hold to. And giving thanks to those things that we keep in our memory. You know, that's one of the powerful things about stories like, like testimonies. And, uh, you know, just different times that we get to communicate with other people about our own experiences. And how we have triumphed through a circumstance with God. It gives us something positive. It gives us hope, reassurance, a reminder that God is real. And that he's right next to us and living with us and being a part of our world. And when we sing about that and when we rejoice about that, it's creating in us a positive memory about our encounters with God. And so I love that this text is reminding us to think of these things to motivate one another, and to ultimately be positive. Now, some of you may be saying, you know, Pastor Jason, I appreciate it. You're doing a sermon about positivity. That's great and all. And especially with what's happening around the world, sometimes it can be positive. But why? Why should I be positive? The world sucks. Or, you know, Jason, why should I, you know, even want to think good thoughts? Or why should I have to do this? You know, what hope is there? I want to remind you of the most famous verse that exists in the Bible. And that that, in itself, is the hope and assurance that we have that can help us remain positive. The most famous verse in the Bible is John... Chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is a hope that we get to carry out all year. Every day, every part of our lives, we have something to look forward to. And I'm not even talking about, like, you know, we, we, we look at heaven sometimes and we think about heaven as this place where there's no more pain, right? Like, or I get to live forever, you know, I don't have to worry about death and cancer. That's great and all, you know. Yay, like, I, trust me, I'm looking forward to that. But we actually get to see the face of God. We get to be with God. Some of you, you know, you can raise your hand to this, if this applies to you if you want. But have you ever been on a spiritual high? Have you ever had this encounter with God that you knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was real? You felt in your heart this tug that captivated you? That you knew that there was more? There was more about God? There was more to his richness and his goodness? You could just feel it and know, like, I am in the presence of God. I can feel him, and I know that he is close. I know that he is in my heart, and I know that he is propelling me and compelling me to do more, to be more, this wholeness and newness and richness of the Father, I am, I'm in it, and I'm in it to win it. I personally have felt that. I, I have felt it throughout many 
stages in my life, right? There, there's high moments, there's low moments. Uh, you know, that's why we call them spiritual highs, because there, there are moments where you're just like, wow, this is incredible, and God is working in so many ways, and you can just see it, and, and the Holy Spirit is just moving, and those moments are just so incredible. One of the hopes that I have is that in heaven, I don't just get a spiritual high. Every single moment is that, that high moment. Every single encounter that I get to have with God in heaven is going to be powerful. Not just spiritually, not just, not just mentally, but also emotionally. Like, I am in the presence of somebody who dearly loves me. I am in the presence of someone who truly wants to be with me, that created me, that knows my name, that knows everything about me, and he wants to spend time with me. That's incredible. I have, I have hope that when that happens, I can be... In the presence of God, I can feel His goodness. I can feel His mercy. I can look forward to that. We have a, we have a song. It's, it's a hymn. And it's called, We Have This Hope. And, and the, the song is, lyrically, it's, We have this hope that burned within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. Each one of us can, can hold on to that hope. No matter how bad 2020 was, slash is, we're still in it. No matter how bad things can get, no matter how damaging our world is, and no matter how sinful it is, you know, there's hope. And not hope that automatically, you know, 2021 will be better. You know, I hope it is. You know, in that sense, but there's an even bigger hope than 2021. There's an even bigger hope than politics and, you know, something new that's coming out. A new phone, a new gadget, a new car, a new model, a new job, a new whatever. There, there's more hope than that. There's a hope that Jesus is coming soon. There's hope of this incredible encounter that we get to have. This incredible relationship that we get to experience day in and day out. It's something to be positive about. It's something to be grateful and thankful for. It's something to sing about and to rejoice with gladness. My challenge for you today is to really think about what it means that Jesus is coming soon. Our church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, its name is literally built on the, this foundational principle that Jesus is coming soon. And we as the Advent church are looking forward to that specific moment. We are hopeful and happy for Jesus' soon return. Are you happy about it? Are you hopeful about it? Are you excited? I hope you are. And if you're not, think about it. Why aren't I happy about it? Why, why, why does that not give me hope? Why, why doesn't it matter to me as much as maybe it should? Think about these things. And see what answer that you come up with. Let's pray. Father God, I'm so thankful for this conversation that we're able to have. The topic of positivity. And even though the word itself does not really show up in the Bible, the synonym is definitely there. And I pray, Lord, that you are able to fill us with the Spirit, to give us a sense of hope and peace. To know that no matter how bad 2020 can be, no matter how bad the future may even hold for us, that we don't even know yet, we can hold on to a beautiful hope, 
of your soon return. Hold on to that idea of what it means to be close to you, to be able to see you face to face like we never have before. And just how marvelous and amazing that encounter will be. I thank you so much, Lord, for all of your goodness, for all of your mercy, and for the grace that you constantly outpour for us. Thank you for that. And we can't wait to see you soon, coming in the clouds. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful, happy Sabbath. And may you be blessed. God be with you.